How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be installing Oxbeam 3-inch ditch lights on my first gen Toyota Sequoia. I just want to give a big thanks to Oxbeam for sending these ditch lights over for me to test out and review. If you guys are interested in purchasing any Oxbeam products, you can use the code MAXWELLPETERS for 15% off your order. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. All right, the first thing we're going to do today is go ahead and just open up the box and I am going to show you guys everything that is included in these Oxbeam 3-inch X-Pro ditch lights. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so first thing we got here is just a little guide, um, troubleshooting, stuff like that. We have a Oxbeam sticker. And then here we have the two ditch lights. So these are three inch ditch lights. There are two of them. Uh, we're gonna be putting two on each side. So I actually have two of these boxes. There is a included wiring harness, which is super nice. If you're not wanting to do any of your own wiring, this makes it really easy to uh, just set these ditch lights up and get them running really quickly. Here are the two ditch lights. We also have a bunch of included hardware, everything that you're going to need to mount these ditch lights onto your car or truck. The last thing in the package here are these clear covers, so you can swap these out if you don't want the yellow or amber lenses. You can go ahead and throw on these clear, so these ditch lights can be either clear or amber, you have both of those options. So that is everything that is included in the box here. Um, we're going to go jump over to the truck, start mounting these up, and then we'll move on to wiring and setting everything up. The other thing I bought here, these are not included in the kit from Oxbeam, but since I'm going to be mounting two on each side, I bought these extension brackets, and this is going to allow me to mount two ditch lights per side. The ditch light brackets as well um, are not included in the kit from Oxbeam. These are custom for each specific vehicle, so I bought these ones for my specific Toyota Sequoia. The first thing we're going to do here today is to start mounting the mounting brackets to the ditch lights. You can see on the ditch lights there are a couple of uh, washers the locking washer and an allen bolt and um, we're just gonna unscrew those and then add in the mounting bracket here and then tighten everything back down just keep the order of the washers on here so it's the bolt and then the locking washer in between and then the flat washer on the end the flat washer is pressed up to the ditch light Okay, technically with the mounting bracket you can mount it either way, but the way I'm going to is um, just like this. So kind of the slope here is facing towards the front of the ditch. Now before we go ahead and tighten the mounting bracket down, make sure that you put the through bolt through this mounting bracket because otherwise once you tighten that down, you guys can see there, there's no space to get that bolt down and through. So if you tighten these down without getting the bolt in, you have to take it all apart anyway. So put the bolt in first and then you can go ahead and thread in these bolts that we removed earlier. There are two holes on the ditch light up top and below. We're using the bottom bolts. Um, the only reason you would be using the top ones is if you're mounting it like vertically or something. So we are using the bottom hole. Okay, so this is what the ditch light looks like. Again, the mounting bracket has that slope going forwards there. Um, we put the through bolt in. This is going to be actually to attach it to the bracket up on the truck. And then we secured both of the Allen key bolts to hold the ditch light to the bracket. So now I gotta do this three more times for the other ditch lights. We'll get them set up and then we'll go and mount them on the truck. The next step is to take these over and mount them onto the truck. I got the ditch lights mounted up on both sides. This extension bracket works amazing. So we have two ditch lights on the passenger side and two ditch lights on the driver's side. Now I'm not super worried about getting these lined up and in a good position yet because uh, once it gets dark, I'll go out and actually adjust these at night to position them where I want them aimed. So um, they're just kind of tightened down and in place. Uh, we'll worry about actually fine tuning them later. Now, like I said, there is a provided wiring harness that Oxbeam gives you in this kit, but my plan is to actually take this wiring harness and customize it to make it my own. The reason for that is I want to use my Oxbeam switch panel, which is mounted right up here. This allows me to control my lights through 
the aux beam panel on the inside of my Sequoia here, just with these buttons. So because I want to wire it up to the switch panel, I am not going to be using the provided aux beam uh, wiring harness. Like I've done with some of my other wiring harnesses, I am going to solder everything together. But before we do that, I am just kind of getting all of the pieces ready. So, all right, with the wires where we want them, we're gonna connect in the aux beam wiring harness. And the reason we're using the aux beam wiring harness is just for this connector here, so that if I ever need to replace a ditch light, I have this easy connection in my wiring harness. Now, with both of these connected, um, basically what we're gonna do is just go ahead and cut both of these wires and snip this here. And there is two. So right now we have two positives and two negatives. We're just gonna basically solder these together and then leaving here, there's just going to be one positive wire and one negative wire. Now on the other side, my plan is really similar. We're gonna use the stock wiring harness from the aux beam just to add in these connectors. And then next, we are going to cut these two wires and join them together. And then that is going to run underneath the fuse box tray here. And then these two wires will connect with the other two wires from the ditch lights on the passenger side. We'll solder those together and then coming to the fuse box here, we will only have two wires, one positive and one negative. I'll show you guys the whole process and explain it more as we put it together. It'll make more sense. But for now, on this side, all we're going to do is same thing as the passenger side. Just cut these wires on the other side of the connector. Back on the passenger side, the next step here is to just kind of cut the next piece. And this is some stranded wire. It's three strands of wire, but really we're only going to be using two. And uh, what we're gonna do is use this to join the positives and the negatives together. And then we're gonna run this closer to the fuse box. So right now I'm just going to uh, kind of lay out a piece, get it kind of uh, to the length I want, and then we'll go ahead and cut it. And again, we're doing the same thing, just joining these two wires together and running them underneath the fuse box. So just going to kind of mock up this uh, stranded wire here and cut a section to length. And again, I'm gonna make sure to cut more wire than I think I need. Okay, so as you guys can see, once we solder these together, we're gonna have um, one positive and one negative coming from the driver's side. And then this wire here is one positive and one negative coming from the passenger side. And then we'll join these together. And then we'll have two wires, one positive and one negative running to our accessory fuse box here. And then by doing that, we're also connecting all of the lights together so that we can control all of the ditch lights by one button. So what you guys can see I've done here is I've joined the positives and the negatives and uh, joined them together to this longer piece of wire. And then once they get joined together out the other side, there is just one positive, which is the black, and one negative, which is the white. So um, that is for one side. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side now. Okay, so hopefully this helps to give you guys a little bit of a better idea. I'm gonna show you where we're at right now. So on this side, we have the two ditch lights and um, these are the connectors. The connectors connect to that three strands wire. Again, we're only using two, one black for the ground and one white for the positive. And this wire runs all the way over closer to the fuse tray over there. Now, if you come over to this side, 
Same thing, we have these strands from the um, ditch lights coming down. We connected it to some of that three strand wire. That runs underneath the fuse box and that one comes up right here. So what we have right now, let me try and separate these, is we have one positive and one ground for the driver's side ditch lights. And then right here, coming from over there, from the passenger side, we have one positive and one ground for the passenger side ditch lights. The last step here is to just join the positives together to connect the passenger and driver side, and then join the grounds together as well. From there, once these are joined together, we are just going to run it to our fuse box here, and then we'll connect to the positive and the ground to our fuse box switch. So that is the last step here. I quickly want to mention here, I know I am soldering everything together, but don't get overwhelmed by this. Just know that the process is the exact same if you're not soldering. I just have all of the equipment to solder and actually kind of enjoy the process, which is why I'm doing it. But there are tons of little uh, wire connectors that make it a lot easier. So if you don't have a soldering iron and don't know how to solder, do not worry. That does not have to stop you from doing this exact same install. Our wiring harness here is pretty much complete. The last thing we just need to do is solder on some of these terminal ends. Alright, so everything is connected. I'm using this 20 amp fuse on the back side of my switch panel here. Um, we'll clean up the wiring harness and everything in a second, but first step is to test and see if these ditch lights work. Alright, let's see if both of them are on. These two are, let's check the other side. Ditch lights are both on, guys. Let's go. They are pretty bright too, check this out. The hood is obviously facing up, but look up here. All right, so last thing I wanna do here is just um, clean up this wiring harness, and by that I just mean kind of zip tie it and uh, get it out of the way. So let's go ahead and do that now. Here are the ditch lights. There are the two on the passenger side and two more on the driver's side. Next step is to actually start aiming these and getting these pointed in the right direction. The goal of these ditch lights is to kind of fill in for these four front lights that I have. These are very forward facing and my hope with these ditch lights is that they aim towards the ditch. So as you can see, they're already kind of pointed out towards the side here, but that really is the goal is to fill in this area kind of to the side of the Sequoia. And then these four front lights, of course, will be facing forwards and giving me a lot of vision just straight ahead. So these are my lights from Oxbean, super excited about them and uh, really excited to get these aimed and test out the ditch lights. going to wrap it up for this video and I just want to share some final thoughts and opinions about the ditch lights. So as you guys saw in the video, they are very bright. They are significantly brighter than my headlights. I'm really excited to have these ditch lights to kind of fill in that area out to the sides of my vehicle. When you're off-roading at night, sometimes that area kind of outside your window is just a blind spot. It's kind of hard to get light in that area and that's where these ditch lights really come in handy. Are they as bright as the five inch V Ultra aux beam lights that I have mounted on the front of my truck? No, they're not, but I also wouldn't expect them to be. 
I think these Oxbeam ditch lights are a great option because they don't cost you an arm and a leg, but you're also not sacrificing quality or light output. They're significantly brighter and more durable than some of the lower end ditch lights, but they're not nearly as expensive as some of the high end ditch lights like those from Baja Designs. These ditch lights are plenty bright for my needs and I am excited to have them on my truck. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget if you are interested in any products from from Oxbeam, you can use the code MAXWELLPETERS for 15% off your order. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's a great free way to help support my channel and I really do appreciate it. This is a good time to mention I also recently started a Patreon page. For those of you who decide to subscribe, there is going to be some bonus footage and behind the scenes footage. With this video, there is going to be a little deeper dive into my wiring harness and just helping to give you guys some more tips and tricks and uh, sharing some more information info about how I did all of the wiring for these ditch lights. So if you're interested, go check out my Patreon page. It's linked in the description of this video as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.